Building in a Small Town, where we're talking to entrepreneurs, community leaders, policymakers, and more to find out how they're building things in small towns. I'm your host, Shelby Smith. Welcome back to the uh, Building in a Small Town podcast. I am joined with a relatively local guest. I mean, you're not yeah. Collins proper, but you're pretty close. Uh, Jenny English of Well Fed. Um, thank you for being here. Thank you for inviting me. I'm super excited. Yeah. Uh, so just want to start off with like your background. Did you grow up um, here in central Iowa, in rural central Iowa? Are you from somewhere else? Like, what's your story? Yeah, so I did grow up from rural central Iowa in LaGrand, Iowa. So right in between Marshalltown and, like I say, the Meskwaki settlement. And so pretty small town. I couldn't tell you what the population is. I don't know things like that, but (laughs) small. And went to East Marshall there, which is also like a small rural community school. So after graduating there, I went to Iowa State, started um, a while ago. Uh, 2007 is when I went to college and really at that time I wanted to be a veterinarian and that's like what I was going to school for. I was also in the Iowa Army National Guard so I was still doing like my drill weekends and stuff like that through college. I did a year overseas in Afghanistan, came back, finished my last year of college and decided after having that year break like man four more years of vet school and it sounds like a lot of money and a lot of time so I ended up graduating with my four-year degree and getting a job back home like in the Marshalltown area as a banker or not a banker but like a teller a bank teller so nothing to do with animal science at the time but I had done an internship where I worked with Iowa Select Farms and loved the internship like learned so much about like rural Iowa agriculture like pigs I did not grow up on a farm my grandpa had like a chicken farm growing up and stuff but he was pretty much out of that business when I got older so it was really cool just to like kind of immerse myself in that and learn about it but also learned that like yeah I do not want to work like in a farm in a processing like that whole spiel really appreciate all the work they do not for me so then um, I was approached by a company local in Ames called Beringer Ingelheim and they are an animal health vaccine and research development company so I started as a temp there like I worked at the bank for not even a year I feel bad my best friend got me the job she was supposed to get like her little like a referral bonus and I was like two weeks before and I was like oh I got this really good job offer <laughs> gotta go <laughs> but started there and I had I worked there for 10 years before um, my new venture with a well-fed life and starting my own business here in rural Iowa um, based out of Collins kind of online though so pretty much anywhere but Yeah. So then you went to Iowa State with the animal science and then went a totally different track. I think that's super common. What year were you in Afghanistan? So I was deployed from 2010 to 2011 during Operation Enduring Freedom. So it was one of the biggest Iowa deployments ever. There was about 3,200 soldiers from like Iowa and some of the units from Minnesota as well that was over there. Okay. And what was your role within the Iowa army national guard yeah so also very different than other things that i'm involved in but i was human resource specialist okay so and specifically overseas i was in charge of all the awards that soldiers received over there so i was at brigade level so at the brigade we were in charge of like knowing where all the units were all of the battalions and things like that and so helping the units and battalions with their awards for the 3200 soldiers that were over there whether that was like purple heart from like combat um combat action badges um silver stars bronze medals things like that basically overseas medals things that we just got for going over there and being involved in the war so it was honestly i was in the national guard for nine years best year of being in the national guard because i actually felt like i had a purpose and got to do something and was working towards something instead of just like the drill weekend where it was like okay let's do another death by powerpoint of training or re you know learning things and 
that like killed me because I'm like I have so much stuff at home I'd rather be doing but being overseas it was a really great experience so yeah so why when um did you join the National Guard in college or like straight out of high school like what was the reason for doing that yeah so I am very much a planner so I always have a plan in place before I pull the trigger on anything um so I joined as soon as I turned 17 when I was a junior in high school because I knew joining the military was going to pay for my four-year college. So that is the reason I joined. I had to get my parents to sign off on that for me. My dad was all like, oh, I don't have to pay for your college? All right. And my mom was like, um, are you sure you want to do this? I don't know. And I'm like, yeah, I think I do. And I was really involved in sports and stuff. So I knew like the physical part of joining was like, I was like, oh, this will be a challenge. Like I'm athletic, but maybe this is going to be hard. So I joined and did what they call like a split training option. So I went to basic training my junior year, came back, finished my senior year of high school, and then did my like advanced individual training my senior year. And I will say for sure, the physical training was probably the easiest part of all of it. And I was not expecting the mental um, hardness and like training that came along with that and being away from like home for the first time really yeah for sure so um you know you said you're really athletic like what sports did you do in high school you only did them at the high school level like what, yeah. what, what was your thing um all of them <laughs> so I talk with this about my clients a lot too because it's so different now I feel like when I talk to clients and their kids are in activities and they're like they have the one sport that they do and now they do it like year round and like do travel teams and AAU. And I'm like, no, like my parents were like, you're going to do the school sports where the bus takes you and brings you. And you know, we're not going to do a whole lot extra outside of that. So yeah, I was in cross country. I did volleyball in middle school, but then I fell in love with running. So I did cross country in high school. I did basketball. I did track softball and yeah, the, all the sports four years around or all years D- yeah the Dinsdale twins were in your were East Marshall they, weren't they they were not East Marshall I'm pretty sure they were like Dyke New Hartford or something okay but they ran yes. okay I was gonna say that would I knew uh, I knew of yes. them very well they yes. were both really good they were very very good I want to say they were a year ahead of me um and so I ran into them whenever back in the day back in the day yeah they were very good. I think they went on to run at Nebraska, and then I think they went on to run professionally, too. So I Oh, think, really? Oh, yeah. Wow. They were very good, like very talented. Yes. But like your twin sister is your best training partner. Like that, it's like almost like cheating. So, <laughs> so they were not East Marshall. Yeah, they were some little school over there. I just, I can't off the top of my head. Um, Dyke New Hartford doesn't quite sound right either. Uh, it sounds too far north. But anyways, so um, gotcha. So then that started you um the you got the job with the using your animal science sort of in um how do you say that again it's Beringer Ingelheim Ingelheim. it's German yeah (laughs) it's I I know the their new building that they built in the research park like I drive past Mm -hmm. it all the time and in my head I never like say the say the name um say the name out loud kind of a deal um So then talk me through what made you decide to leave that and take the leap into self-employment and yeah. Yeah. So when I was going to college, I also had a passion for nutrition. So I actually have a minor in human nutrition as well. And when I was in college, I was also, you know, kind of like, well, I want to be a vet because vets make money. Turns out vets don't make that great of money, especially with all the debt they have (laughs) and the like mental stress. They have like one of the highest suicide rates for like professionals. Yeah. Um, so I wanted to, I liked human nutrition, got a minor in that, but I didn't know how that was going to make money. Honestly, I was like, I don't know what kind of job I can get with this besides a registered dietitian. And I'm just not a huge fan of the registered dietitian route. They definitely have a role and are needed, but to me, like, it's part of our healthcare system that's flawed of that, like, oh, let's train you to how to help somebody that already has diabetes or already has heart disease or already has something that you have to help treat instead of prevent. And I'm like, I would rather help people, you know, not get that sick to start with and prevent it. So the registered dietitian route just didn't feel right to me. So I went ahead, you know, continued my schooling, went 
the animal science route, got that job, actually went back for my master's. So I have a master's in veterinary microbiology because that was helping me in my career at the time push that way. But still to correlate to like what I do now, tons of research and like reading information and learning how to decipher, you know, what's a good study, what's not a good study, like what really matters or not. And so that kind of came to like 2019, I had a personal like event happen or a goal that I set for myself. I turned 30 and I was like overweight and not like happy with the way I looked. And I was like, I'm not buying a bigger size of of jeans. Like I'm only five foot one. So I'm already like small in stature to begin with. And I'm like, I refuse, like something's going to change. So I put it on my bucket list to do a bodybuilding competition. And I signed up for that in the spring of 2019. So that was kind of like my personal like motivation. And I had no idea like what to do. I was just like, well, I'm going to reach out to a couple friends that I know have done this before and ask them, you know, how they got started. And they're like, well, you're definitely going to need a coach. Like, here's a couple coaches we recommend. And I reached out to one of them and she's like, yep, I'm still coaching. Like, if you want to do this, I'll take you on. I do all my coaching online because she was based out of um, like the Grimes area. Uh, and I was like, okay, perfect. And so I signed up and did like 16 weeks of the training where, I mean, it is pretty intense of tracking your food, working out. And I really wasn't doing a whole lot before that. Like I love food (laughs) and I've done stuff before. Like I've done Beachbody, I've done CrossFit, um, never stuck with anything. Did the seven day, I don't know, cabbage diet thing. I don't know if you've heard of that cabbage soup diet. (laughs) I have. I've heard of it secondhand. Yes. Yes. Me and my friend would try and do that. And then. Um, but this actually really worked, it turns out. So it helped keep me accountable and I really saw results. So I was able to like step on stage in 2019, was super proud with like how far I came and I thought it was going to be a one and done, like, all right, check this off my bucket list. But throughout the whole process and then just like the community of the bodybuilding world was super like empowering and exciting and I was like oh I really like this like I want to see if I can do better next time around so now I've been doing bodybuilding for like the last five years and that's kind of what like re-sparked the like drive of like I really like this as a passion like I really like the nutrition side I honestly don't like exercising that much but (laughs) It has a lot of benefits and I always enjoy it when I'm done exercising. So um, that was where people started asking me, right? Because I would like share stories and stuff. When I was doing my first bodybuilding, like I didn't really tell anybody that I was doing it because I was like, what if I fail? Like, let me just do this, you know, behind closed doors. My family and friends, close ones and new and stuff. But afterwards, then I was like, yeah, I did this. And people were like, oh, wow. Or like they could tell like, oh, you lost a lot of weight. What did you do? And so kind of just started like helping more people like just by answering questions like that. And then I asked my coach, you know, like, well, what did you do for the nutrition side of things? She's like, oh, I got a certification as a nutrition coach. Like this is the, you know, certification that I use. And I was like, oh, okay, cool. So at that time it was Precision Nutrition. And that's where I signed up to get my nutrition coaching certificate back in like, I think I signed up for it in the fall of 2019. And then like most things, if you don't have a plan and it's like self-led, kind of like online courses in college, it's like procrastinating until you have to get it done. Except for this, there is no deadline. So finally I was like, oh my gosh, I just need to get this done so I can say that I have it. And so I basically, like most of my other classes, I just took all the quizzes and was like, let me just see how I do. And I passed. So I was like, all right, cool. Now I'm certified. Now what do I do? And that was where it was like, okay, I don't know how to like make this a business or make money out of it. Kind of going back to that original thought when I was in college. And so I started like looking online and stuff and following some people listening to Mind Pump Media. Like we talked that we both listened to that podcast Um, and they brought Jason Phillips on. Have you? Okay. Yeah. Yep. So I've been listening to them since like 2015. So okay. I did a bodybuilding competition in 2015. So can totally, totally relate. It was one and done for me though. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's awesome. We will have to talk more about that. Mm-hmm. Um, so Jason Phillips came on and did an interview and talked about Nutrition Coaching Institute. And I was like, all right, like this sounds interesting. And that was like probably... I was like looking back through some of my notes when I was like doing my goal setting this year and I think it was like in 2017 when I first heard of him and like signed up for his first like free master class 
And honestly, to this day, I like still haven't like opened that <laughs> and looked at it, but it's on my list to do. Um, but that's where I started listening to him more and he was putting out information of like how to actually make it a business. And so fast forward, you know, like I said, that was 2017, basically 2020 before, you know, the world changed, as they say, Mm -hmm. I was looking into like, okay, how can I like start making a transition? And so I actually looking right over there, I read Rich Dad, Poor Dad and recommended by my realtor friend and found out that I'm like, yeah, I think I want to get into real estate, like investing and kind of use that as an opportunity to make some passive income because I made really good money at my BI job and like, how do I transition? I'm all about budgeting. And so my friend, she helped me get involved with some investment properties in 2020. So that was, it's kind of like another like business kind of that I have going on too, but that helped start bringing in some like extra income basically and then the real change came when my company said that everyone had to be mandated for vaccination and Mm -hmm. if you weren't going to get the COVID vaccine then you weren't going to have a job anymore and that just really rubbed me the wrong way um uh, I won't get into it but I got an exemption for religious purposes saying you know like no I don't have to be vaccinated because to me it's like that's my body and like what I do with it is my choice and like how dare you try to tell me like I need this vaccine knowing like I'm a vaccine researcher like I know what vaccines are good what ones you should really get what ones you know should be optional and so that was just very stressful time for everybody but for me I was like I don't like this like I don't want to work somewhere where I feel pressured that I have to do something and I had a lot of colleagues that felt pressured to get it even though they really didn't want to or had like other health concerns where they were like you know what if this happens and there's basically like nope you know there's no exemptions besides this route and so when that happened, like I had to then be like tested every time I came on site. I had to wear an N95 mask all the time, even though like our site, like everyone had already had COVID, you know, and everybody else was vaccinated pretty much but me. And I could still be off site without a mask with coworkers or I could be in a private office room by myself without a mask. And I'm like, this is just, this does not make sense, people. It doesn't. <laughs> and so that really like drove me to be like, okay, like if this comes, you know, again or like gets worse or like this doesn't work anymore, what am I going to do? Because I was willing to let that job go. I was willing to stand my ground and be like, no, like this isn't okay. And what really sucked for some people is that that like, rule or whatever didn't even hold up for a year before they removed the mandatory vaccination and decided that oh we don't need to mandate it anymore and we have a bunch of European colleagues and it wasn't mandated for them it was only the U.S. and we have some federal like contracts and stuff so I think that came into play that is my own personal thoughts I don't know that for sure but that's how I felt about it so I started trying to build my business up with my nutrition and online health coaching using uh, Nutrition Coaching Institute's programs. They have like a business mentorship program specifically for nutrition coaches. And so I got involved with that and basically meet with them at least twice a year on like quarterly, like one day business deep dives, they call it, to be like, okay, what's your strategy? Where are you going? And doing courses and actually following through with the courses because you have to be there like online to move forward and that has really been like the greatest like thing to help me get to where I am so finally again I like to plan and like I don't make big decisions just because I'm like oh this sounds fun but um May 1st of this past year so 2023 is when like I quit my old job that was my last day was April 30th and I went all in on like all right I'm gonna run my own business and honestly I absolutely love it I don't regret it at all I've never looked back and been like oh what would it been like like it's been really great so far yeah wow that's awesome um what a cool story um so do you remember then your first paying customer oh I do yes I do remember my first paying customer 
because um, it was before I was even like officially like a coach and like marketing myself. It was back when like people were just asking me for advice and I had someone reach out and she was like, hey, like I'm looking to get healthier. Like, would you help me? She's like, I'm willing to pay you. And I'm like, yeah, for sure. Like you're my first customer. And honestly, I'm not even like officially certified, which no one even cares about that or asks, but it's still good to have. <laughs> um I was like, yeah, I'll like cut you a super sweet deal just for like entrusting me to help you on the way. So that was, yeah, that was probably like 2017, 2018 or something like that. That's who I would consider my first like true customer. Yeah, yeah. your first, I always say like your first paying customer is literally the first person who pays you something for your service, whether it be, you know, uh, not even what you're offering these days or even if it's a less than you should have charged them sort of a situation like your first customer is your first customer um and i find most people most people remember their first one but um just wanted to see if that was the case with you as well so then uh the bodybuilding thing what division did you did, were you bikini were you i started out with bikini and then I did, and then 2020, I prepped, but then I never competed because of COVID. 2021, I actually did bikini and figure, and then I did that as well in 2022, and this past year, I did wellness, which is a new, like, division category that just came out a couple years ago. Which, what is, like, what is wellness? Is it, like, a mix between bikini and, like, is it, or do you have to do more things? Yeah, so it's most similar to bikini, but it's bikini is more like symmetrical top to bottom wellness is really more like a woman like shapely figure so lower body is more developed so glutes thighs hamstrings and then your upper body is less developed so really thinking about like I I say like most natural women's like body build the shape of like lower body and then is bigger upper body is like smaller so not as developed back like in figure it's very much like your back needs to be developed more in bikini it's more of like soft looks not as much muscle so it's kind of in between but it's kind of its own category too I feel like yeah and that definitely fits my body type best because I'm very like quad lower body dominant Mm -hmm. yeah and it's figuring out what what your yeah like you said your body type and what look you prefer and what level of leanness you have to get to and everything yes. else yeah it's its own it's its own beast but cool um so what do you really like about the bodybuilding space like is it just you like the transformation you like the discipline you like um so one thing I I will point out because I know like from talking to other people too so the bodybuilding I've done is NANBF it's natural bodybuilding so a lot of times when people think of bodybuilding they automatically think of like steroids and like taking drugs and things like that so there is a very there is that like there's definitely more of that type of bodybuilding I think than there is natural bodybuilding so natural bodybuilding is what I do I'm very much about like what can my body do on its own not like what can I take to like look a certain way or get the strongest so with natural bodybuilding, that's probably the thing I like most about it is that you're really testing your own natural ability of like how far can you push yourself. But then also what I like, like obviously the stage, the competition, you are competing, you know, against others, but it doesn't feel like that. Like the whole day of like competition, everybody is excited. Everybody's cheering everyone else on. Like everybody on there and at that stage, like, deserves to be there and like probably deserves to win because everybody knows how much time and discipline and effort that went into it so it's not like one of those sports where it's like oh like I'm just like so much better than you like why didn't I win I'm sure there's like some people that do feel that way but for the most part like everyone is just super uplifting and encouraging which is also super helpful when you are wearing like a tiny bikini and (laughs) heels like the last thing you want is like someone throwing shade at you yes oh for sure so then are you still working with a coach on that side is it the same coach did you pick a new coach like are you doing your own thing now that you're certified and all that um no I'm not doing my own thing because I'm not enough (laughs) self-discipline to actually hold myself accountable which is what I tell a lot of my clients I'm like your coach has a coach let me tell you yeah (laughs) um I've had several coaches throughout like the five years the first coach that I started with loved her she decided she wasn't going to coach bodybuilders anymore though and she was going to go more into like the lifestyle coaching so then I had to find a new coach and 
coaching is definitely like a lot of times when you are a coach or like you know a business owner and you have competition right you could be selling the same like product or service and a lot of coaches or business people get hung up on like well how do I stand out or how is this different than you know someone down the street and it's like you like you are the difference and people connect different with different people so in finding a new coach like I had one coach who like I really liked him but his approach just wasn't like what worked for me and then I started working with another coach um, based out of Minneapolis. I loved her, used her for two years, and she was really great at doing like the bodybuilding, getting me ready for competition. But um, I'm sure maybe this is part of the reason maybe you didn't do it again or a lot of struggle for people is it's not the discipline leading up to like the it's stage. The reverse. Oh yeah. Absolutely 100%. It's the reverse. So like that coach for me wasn't ideal for the reverse because a lot of coaches that do the bodybuilding in my experience anyways are really focused on the exercise and that's what they started at they started as a personal trainer and then did like the nutrition as a side part where for me and like people that do NCI I would still say a lot of them are personal trainers first and then do nutrition coaching but for me like I'm nutrition coaching first because I believe diet is 80 percent of it exercise is 20 percent and you have so much more opportunity to get results faster because you eat every single day at least three times a day, hopefully. Like you should be at least eating three times a day. Um, so I now have a new coach that I met through doing like my business deep dives when I was out in Montana last fall. And so he's my nutrition coach now to help coach me through the reverse diet because I knew I was going to need like super accountability I'm like I need to be able to call and text you like whenever like if I have a craving come up or if I'm like oh my gosh I stepped on the scale and this happened or I fell off and like went on a binge now what do I do type thing even though I'm a coach and I know what to do right like if that was a client coming to me I'm like okay calm down this is just what you need but having that outside accountability and just to like talk it and have someone like say it back to you is like so different than you trying to tell yourself in your head yeah. Oh, no, that makes total sense. That was any time that I've had a coach through any of my athletic endeavors or anything like that, I am a thousand percent more uh, more likely to follow the plan, even if, like you said, I can write, I can write the program, I can write the plan, um, but just having that outside third party maybe telling you what needs to be done or, you know, talking off the ledge in that situation yeah, no, mine mine was one and done for a multitude of reasons, but I just, it was, mm -mm, that's not mine, not my thing. It was my, the only time in my life, the only quote unquote sport in my life where I, I played basketball in college and then played oh. overseas. So I did that and um, I tore my lateral meniscus in my left knee first season over in Ireland. And um, so then I decided to do the bodybuilding thing because non-lateral movements didn't hurt but you know which also really sucks about bodybuilding though because I always with all my coaches I was like can we build in some lateral movements because yeah it yes. hurts afterwards yeah like, you're just not as functional you are not as functional at all but for me that that worked out great you know and it really helped with the rehab to get everything really strong because obviously I was on as division one athlete like I was on a strength and conditioning like I had that all four years and then going overseas you didn't necessarily have that and so fell off of it got injured anyways got into the bodybuilding thing did a bikini competition ended up way too lean didn't have a coach did my own thing oh. yeah terrible terrible idea yeah but you did your own thing man I like, know that takes discipline I know I was 25 years <laughs> old and just like an idiot but anyways um so yeah and I just I did not enjoy it I mean, it was uh, interesting to watch my body transform, get that lean, was ended up running a 19 minute 5k during peak week, which was a horrible idea. Like I raced a 5k on peak week. Oh my God. Yes. Yeah. Like there's a lot of things that I did, <laughs> like looking back, I'm like, you are an absolute idiot. But um, I just didn't enjoy it. I didn't enjoy like the getting dolled up thing. Like I didn't, was not my thing. So, but then I got into obstacle course racing and ultra marathons and powerlifting and all the things. So uh, I commend you for like sticking with the bodybuilding thing because it's definitely a different lifestyle. Like it's a, it takes a level of discipline that I yes. think most people can't do. Um, so when you're doing a typical prep, is it, are you doing a 12 week prep? Are you doing a 16, 20? Yeah. So 
again, like I always feel like I am not typical. So a lot of times people that I've met anyways in bodybuilding, the ones that do it like year after year are very regimented of like all year round, right? If they're not in a prep phase, then they're in a growth phase and they like stick to their routine. Man, I suck at routines. So I like to do it because I'm like, I need practice at routines. Like, especially when you own your own business, like you have to have a routine and it has to be pretty good. Mm -hmm. (laughs) So I usually do like a 16 week prep, if not a little bit longer. Like this last one, I started June 1st and my first competition was at the end of September. So I think that was like 16 to 18 weeks somewhere in there. So Um, But before that, like, I always, like, which is what I wanted to be different this time around was, like, the reverse diet process, again, like we talked about, it's hard, like, and I've never feel like I've actually, like, done it successfully. So this time coming into prep, I was like, the end goal is not competition. It's not to, you know, get your pro card and, like, be able to compete at the pro level. It's to reverse successfully. But I know, like, this is part of the process to get me there and then at the time too I was like starting my own business so I was like okay I can use this time to like market and like tell my story and this is how I'm doing it none of that happened because I'm sure if you remember with your prep it's like you have too much going on to in prep to like think about while you're cutting calories and stuff it's like okay I don't really actually have the extra energy or brain space to be like oh let me like talk about this and write up things and So I'm still going to do that, but it's going to be from, you know, like a reflective standpoint instead (laughs) of like in the trenches doing it. Um, And this prep was different because I did it in the summer. So usually I prep like right now I would be in prep and prep January to like May. It's usually when people are like not doing a whole lot because like we saw there, yep, it's still snowing outside. And so you're not as active like with social events and things. So it's easier to like be disciplined with yourself. But the problem with that is then once you're done training and restricting yourself, it's summertime and it's like game on. Like there's barbecues, there's the lake, there's like all kinds of social get togethers, vacations. And that's where like I would fall off because it's just too hard to like resist all the temptation when you don't have to step on stage and you're like, hey, I'm done. Like I get to enjoy myself. So this time I decided to prep during summer and compete in the fall because I was like then my reverse diet process is going to be the time where there's not a lot going on if I can like make it through the holidays like I'm going to be pretty good so that's what I did this time around and so far like it has worked way better than my previous reverse diets and process like that the prep went way better than I thought it would because I do like rag bry Uh, We went on a vacation to Tennessee. My brother got married. Like we do a big family lake weekend over the 4th of July. So I had a lot of activities where I was like, okay, like I need to like not, you know, go off the rails. And like I basically didn't drink all summer. And I thought it was going to be a lot harder than it was. It was actually like really easy. Probably because I did, you know, preps before that. So like I knew what to expect so I could like moderate it better. But it went really well and I felt like a lot more balanced than it. I didn't feel like I was missing out. I could go to activities and enjoy myself and not be like, oh, like I can't have this or that and things. It was more of like a choice, not like I can or can't do it. Yeah. Awesome. Well, and it's, I think, I imagine um, as with anything, you know, the more you do it, the better you get at it. The more you learn your body, the more you figure out what works for you and what doesn't. Um, so, yeah, I like I said, I commend you because it is a different life, different yeah. lifestyle, one that I, I don't know that I could do. But let's talk about um, your business, about, you know, what do you offer folks? Like you do the nutrition side, so do you like bring them in for 12 weeks? Do you bring them in for 16? Like, are you doing that sort of a thing or are you, is it very open-ended of like, come work with me as long as you need to work with me? Like what, what does that look like? Yep. So with my program, the Well-Fed Life program, it's usually a six-month program. And I honestly, I started out as a three-month program. And the reason I switched to six months is, for one, I did three months because I just wanted, like, people to get in. And it's a lot harder. We were talking about, like, lowering the barrier earlier. Like, people can commit to three months. But committing to six months is, like, you know, that's a bigger commitment. But that's what people truly need to get the results they want and 
the key, keep the results, right? So again, the reverse diet process is so important. And even in bodybuilding, like you still have to do that, like in a lifestyle approach, which is what I do with my clients. So it's a six month program and it's cut into like three different phases. The phases themselves are like fluid of how long those last because it definitely is very personalized on people's goals, but also their habits and like how willing and able are they to commit and how much previous experience have they had? Have they tried personal coaching before? Have they tried different diets before? Like, how are they coming to me? Like, I had a a recent client that came for me and she's like, I've been doing keto for like years. She's like, I always see great results. I lose a ton of weight. And she's like, but then I gain a ton of weight back and then some. I'm like, so is it really great? Like, is it really working for you? And she's like, yeah, no, it's not. That's why I'm here. And I'm like, yeah, so starting her like we were able to usually the first phase is like metabolism restoration like we need to fix your metabolism because chances are you've been chronically under eating and or doing like fad diets yo-yo dieting restrict binging and we need to build your metabolism up so it feels safe to lose weight instead of trying to force it to lose weight in a starvation mode which is like what most typical diets like promote cut calories and you're gonna lose weight So my approach is different in that like, hey, let's eat more calories and I promise you, you're going to lose weight. And a lot of times clients are like, how is this working? Like, I don't understand. I'm like, it's science. (laughs) I love science. But that's the first phase of just restoring the metabolism. And then we actually go into like a weight loss phase after they have a really solid foundation and are like consistent with habits. They're consistent with hitting macros, with hitting good protein. I always, always push protein on my clients because most of us do not eat enough protein unless you're tracking it and trying to eat protein. Um, And then workouts. So even though I am nutrition coaching, I do workouts as well. They're all online. Like they do them on their own. So I don't train them. I use mind pumps programs. So the maps programs that they have, I use those with my clients because why reinvent the wheel when there's these experts that like made the great programs so I use those I have like an online coaching platform everything's online or virtual so I don't ever meet with my clients unless they're like local and we you know meet on occasion or whatnot Um, and then the last phase of that six-month program is the most important phase again like I don't want someone to come to me and be like oh hey I met my goal, wait, you know, like I'm done. Thanks for your help. And then leave and then come back two months and be like, oh my gosh, I gained it all back. And it's like, yeah, there's this part called the reverse diet. Like we need to do that. So that's why like it's a six month minimum commitment. So we can build back out of that diet phase and then get them to a healthy lifestyle integration where they don't have to be so restrictive, where they can enjoy things and not like feel like they have to diet but maintain the results that they got and not like pack back on the weight as soon as they quit the diet because all they want to do is eat everything they told themselves they couldn't have. Right. Yeah. So then um, what has been the most successful way for you to gain clients? Like advertise, has it been sharing on social media? Has it been, um, you know, where you're working with the wellness center now, you're on the wellness center board. Um, but you did mention that all of your stuff is virtual. So hypothetically you can have clients from anywhere. So what way have you been connecting with potential clients? Like where have you, what's been your pipeline builder? Yep, definitely social media. So I have a Facebook community called Metabolism Makeover for the Overthinker. And that is you know, a free community where anybody, um, women focused can join and just a ton of free value. So I, I truly believe, like I said, right, like everyone connects differently with people. So you have to find a coach that connects with you. So being able to like have a space where I can connect with people and show them like, Hey, this is like what I provide, giving a lot of free value and resources to kind of build that trust, but also that relationship and to let them decide like, oh, is like this someone I want to work with or is there someone else? Because I can tell you like there are other coaches that do what I just explained as a program like everywhere. That's what we learn in in the Nutrition Coaching Institute of like this is how you should program your nutrition coaching. But it's really about like connecting on like a personality level. 
And so, yeah, the social media, I definitely say my Facebook group and like word of mouth, having friends invite other people. And then I offer free challenges like throughout the year in that group. And I would say as far as like my pipeline, that's probably where I get most of my people that turn into clients because then they get a taste of it, right? Like they do a 21 day challenge and they actually see results and they're like, hey, this is working. Like imagine if I worked with her one-on-one, like how fast could I get my results? How much could I see in a difference besides trying to like do it on my own, which is always like a struggle, which again is like why I have a coach. Even with, you know, talking about small businesses, I strongly believe if you're starting a strong business, like you need a coach or you need a business mentor or you need somebody to help you if you want to do it and not like be beating your head against the wall, trying to figure it out on your own. Yeah, for sure. Take advantage of other people's mistakes, if nothing else kind of thing. It'll save you the heartbreak and the time. Um, so then when somebody's working with you, like are they, is it weekly check-ins? Like are you giving them a plan for a week? Are you giving them a plan for a month? Like how does that work functionally? Yeah, so um with my program so there's an online coaching platform that I use and then there's also chronometer which is a free food tracking app so like anybody can use that but that's the app I use with my clients to track their food and then in the online coaching platform that's where their workouts are at we track water steps um sometimes Certain clients will have specific habits or goals that they have so we can put in things to help build them towards those goals. And then we do a weekly check-in. And that is one thing that I will say uh, for me as a coach and for being coached that I think is one of the most valuable things is having my one-on-one check-ins weekly are like a video call like I want to see your face and I want to talk to you in real time it's not an online form where you like send it submit it and you wait for my response because I find people hold themselves a lot more accountable when they're like oh like we are actually meeting face to face like here's what I didn't do I am sorry (laughs) yes um and they stick to it more so again it's really about accountability so that's why for me like I'm all about like the checking in face to face. Now, obviously, like if someone has vacation or other things coming up, there's online check in forms and other options. But I really stress that like in all my online like client intakes, like, hey, like we need to pick a time and date. And like we set that in the calendar today because even saying like, hey, we have one on one check ins weekly. Just let me know week by week, like when we're going to check in isn't like as accountable as like set date and time every week like this is the commitment you're making right yep I can see yeah that would like you said face to face it's a lot harder to be like I'm really sorry that I didn't do what you told me to do (laughs) and um I could see where most people would then maybe put in a little extra effort to make sure that that's a better check-in yeah well and it helps too from my standpoint as a coach because if they didn't make a habit you know or they didn't do what I asked them to do we can talk about it more in like a conversation of like okay well why didn't you like what do we think we can change for next week to like improve the chances of you actually completing that goal or do we need to you know cut that goal back maybe it was too ambitious you know and we need to adjust it And that is a lot easier to do on a one-on-one call back and forth instead of like trying to message back and forth on like an online check-in form. You just don't get as much data. And again, like I'm a researcher, so I'm all about the data and using that to progress our program and whatnot. So based on that, like usually it is like week by week we're adjusting things or changing things. There are certain things in the program that it's like no matter what, every day, like I want you to do these things. So that doesn't change throughout the program. But literally pretty much every one of my clients programs looks different because that's what it's supposed to be. It's supposed to be personal and individualized. So it's not like, you know, the eight week transformation program that you can buy online and they give you the meal plan and they're like, literally follow these steps and do these workouts like it's not that because everybody, again, is different. Some people like certain workouts like I love yoga and I get so excited when I have a client that's like yeah I'll do yoga I will say most of my clients are like "Ooh, I'm not a huge fan of yoga and I'm like dang it okay well how about you just try it for me tell me what you think yeah (laughs) 10 minutes 10 minutes and come back to me yeah okay that's awesome so no cookie cutter cookie cutter programs for meal everything is very individualized and so at this point how many clients do you typically run at a time like I imagine there's only one of you so you do have a maximum yes so is there a max that you will take on at any given time like are you at that max right now or do you have some availability tell me about that 
So since I started officially like online coaching full time back in May, I've been continually growing my client basis. So I'm not at my max yet. My max goal for myself right now is like 20 to 25 clients because I feel like that's where I can still provide that like personal level of coaching with that one-on-one calls because when you do get higher than that it's a lot harder to schedule a 30-minute call with you know 40 people every week versus the 20 to 25 people and right now um if I remember right because I just onboarded some new clients you know new year year that's a a big yeah (laughs) a big time for me as a coach to get new people on so I think I'm like between 15 and 18 I think because I do offer so I just did like a scholarship offer I do it once a year where I put out an application anybody can apply to get three months of free coaching so I have clients from that that get to experience it for free for three months and see the progress along that way as well without having to like commit because you know, personal coaching it is an investment. Like it does require commitment, discipline, but also, you know, money. And so that doesn't work for everybody. And I still believe that everybody should be able to reach those goals on their, you know, health journey and take ownership of their health. So I do that scholarship once a year. And then also usually when I run my challenges, the challenge winner, that's what they get as a prize. They either get $500 cash or three months of nutrition coaching. And I'm excited at least, but that no one's ever taken the cash. Everyone's like, no, I want the nutrition coaching. Like that's what I'm here for. And so that always makes me excited too for them. That's awesome. That's awesome. Um, that's a good prize too for a challenge winner. Um, and typically like when you do those challenges, like what's the criteria to win? Is it just like you stuck to the challenge or is it like a transformation piece? Like what, what, what does that look like? So again, it varies because this is my first year, right? So I'm like trying out different things to see what works best and what doesn't work um, and what people stick to. So usually my challenges are no longer than 21 days because that's like long enough. Like first week, everyone's on board. Second week starts getting a little shaky. Third week, like you have the people that are like, yeah, I really want this for myself. So the criteria is usually like very minimal because again, I don't want to make it too complicated, but like did you finish the challenge? Did you show up for the last call or did you fill out the post challenge survey? Like, did you do the things all three weeks? So usually that like narrows it down honestly on its own pretty quick on who's like the remaining like contestants or whatnot. So, and then after that, it does come down to consistency. So I don't do transformation challenges of like who lost the most weight or who had, you know, the most body fat percentage change. For one, um, here in Iowa, there's not a lot of places, honestly, that you can go to get your body fat tested, like, accurately. Fit Farm in Ankeny does have, like, an in-body scan for free, so I use that a lot. But a lot of my clients don't have, like, close access to that, so that wouldn't work for them. But really, it comes down to habits. So a lot of my challenges are habit-based and being able to do those consistently. So I would say that and like being able to actually complete the challenge is like the bare minimum requirements. Follow instructions. <laughs> if you follow instructions, your chances are pretty good. Yeah, you have a really good, good chance. Yes. <laughs> Isn't it funny that like that's, yeah, that that even that bare minimum, sometimes people just can't even stick to it. But yeah, um, it happens. So, okay, awesome. So what, um, What would you say in the last five years is like a belief or habit or just something that you've changed your mind on um, that has just changed the way you think about things? Ooh, it's a hard one. It is. I think probably the biggest thing that I could say is that the whole thought of like I have to go to college and get a degree so I can get a profession and work like in your regular nine to five job. Like that was something that was just like, that was the expectation growing up and like going to school, like that's that's what you were working towards. And just listening and like learning more on my own through like podcasts and like entrepreneurs of like, that's not necessarily like the best route to get you to where you wanna be. like. I have had so much more, I feel like, personal success and growth and being able to be like, what can I do on my own 
to like earn an income or what do I really enjoy to do to like make or create businesses or different things like I know before we sat down here we were talking about the tea and the coffee bar over there like that's what I did this weekend was like redo a coffee bar so much work and money spent in paint it would have been way better to just buy one online and have it shipped front to my front door but I'm like I created this like this looks great like it just fulfills me so much more and like really trying to teach that like kind of a little bit to my niece and nephew of like what are you going to do when you grow up like is that what you really want to do what are you passionate about like maybe you should learn more about business like I so wish that I would have went and done more business classes in college but then I have friends that were business majors and they're like literally it taught me nothing about business and being an entrepreneur so you are not missing out I'm like okay that makes me feel better but I would say that has definitely been the biggest shift starting like again with the rental um properties that I have that was kind of I feel like my first like step towards like okay I'm like an entrepreneur doing this on my own and then starting my nutrition coaching business and then I have an idea to start another business a little like Airbnb tiny home business thing I just gotta get my sister on board (laughs) with a lake property that we have in southern Iowa and like thinking about that gets me super excited so I think that would probably be the biggest shift in five years is that I don't have to work at a company for 20 years to earn my retirement and be able to like then get to live the life that I want to live after retirement you know it's like I'm living the life that I want to live like right now and it's been awesome that's awesome very cool so then you've been in business for about a year now a little over a year yep just over a year from when I officially kicked off my like Facebook group so that's when I like and got my LLC like last November so yeah yeah. so that was a big step so then um what's really worked for you in the last 12 months it could be in the business space it could be like in the personal space like is there something in the last 12 months that's like you look back and you're like that really worked like we are carrying that over into 2024 or something like that yeah um routine systems structure (laughs) um I think too a lot of times with like entrepreneurs they tend to have like a personality or thought process of like this is exciting like I want to do this let's jump in and just get started and then not realizing like okay like pushing out like that's what leads to burnout a lot of times and I've like felt that even on myself like I'm just gonna keep you know chugging along like I just need to do this thing next and this thing next but when I take the time to do like my business quarterly meeting so I had one in Arizona at the end of September with Jason Phillips like he's there we all get together it's like four or five of us and we talk about our businesses and then we set the goals for like the next three months and like having that clarity that focus intention like these are the things that I need to do to move the needle forward has been like the biggest game changer instead of being like I gotta do this I gotta do this like and getting distracted like shiny object syndrome so definitely having like a plan mapped out and like focusing more on like what is my routine or what does work best for me because everybody is different and so trying to still figure that out for myself of like okay when do I work best to do like creativeness or posting on social media so systems like having a routine and then consistency always consistency the more consistent like the more things compound and get better so and I'm sure that's exactly what you're telling your clients as well is consistency you know it's probably things you're (laughs) again it's kind of like you know you said your coach has a coach and the reason is is you know you know this like you know these things but it's always good to have somebody keep you accountable and realizing that yeah this seems like a little baby step that's not going to make any difference today and it won't today but you'll do it again tomorrow and you'll do it again the next day and you'll do it again the next day and then by the time you get to a week you're like oh okay yes (laughs) it starts to make sense and it's always the small habits that people are like why am I doing this I'm like I promise you like this is what's gonna set you up for long-term success it's not like doing you know the super extreme dieting or like when I get clients and I'm like all right like I'm ready to diet I'm like oh not yet not yet like let's just wait because really those small habits over time is what like leads up to the big gains and it's hard for us to like have the patience and discipline but it always is better in the long run and I think that probably works for businesses too and right it's like the five-year mark of like whether like your business has like made it or not 
And I think a lot of times people don't make it to that five years because they don't have the routine, the system and the structure in place. And they've just been grinding until they can't grind anymore. Yeah. I think that, yeah, five years is a big mark. It's, um, yeah, there's a lot of things. There's a lot of things that I think people, if they took a step back, um, and we're not always working in their business, but working on it and mm-hmm. had the space or the time or the mental capacity to do it. Uh, I think a lot of problems would potentially be solved. I don't know. Easy for us to armchair quarterback it. Um, but yeah, I sit putting the systems in place, even if it doesn't necessarily make sense at the time will pay dividends down the road. And so, um, just getting, but at the same time, like at some point in early on, you need to see, have some sort of positive feedback, um, so again, sometimes it's a removing the barrier or lowering the barrier, lowering yeah. the expectation, if you will, like you can see the end goal that you really want, but then breaking it down into the steps is not always the easiest thing, which is no. why you hire a coach because yeah. it's called the boring work in the NCI <laughs> and it's so true. Like even for me, like for the business side of things, it's like, oh, I really don't want to do this work cause it doesn't seem as exciting and fun but I really need to do this work for the long term. Yeah. Oh, without a doubt. And it's yes, but sometimes it's hard to see all of it compound. Um, I totally get it. So then what are you super excited about in the next 12 months? Um, oh, so much. I, I will say that I have not fully done my 2024 goal setting yet. And I know it's like what the eighth or whatnot, but I'm all about giving myself the whole month of January to kind of plan for that. Yeah, Let it settle in a little bit. See what it's going to be. But I would say for the next 12 months coming up soon, NCI has coaching con 2024. So that's a big like nutrition coaching conference down in Orlando, Florida. I went to their one last year that was in Arizona. So much fun. A lot of good speakers. Um, So I'm really looking forward to that, really looking forward to my next quarterly meeting so I can like show up and be like, hey, like, look at all the things I did. Like, no, I didn't do everything, but making progress. Um, And then also I'm just trying to think like if there's anything like personal that I'm really looking forward to, probably the summer and just like that's more of a time like where I get to relax and enjoy more too because usually I'm not getting new clients in the summer because people are like no it's like fun time I'm not trying to like lose weight I'm trying to just enjoy you know wherever I'm at right now um so it does slow down a little bit during that time and then also I hired like a marketing coach because I know like this past year that is just like something I've really struggled with of being consistent with of like how do I manage all of this like marketing that I'm supposed to do to get more clients and to get like a steady stream without like having it consume like my life every day for a certain period of time. So I'm really looking forward to working with her in that respect of like, again, how can I do this, you know, consistently long-term in a routine where I'm not going to burn myself out because I'm so scared that like that will happen because I know that's a big thing. And so trying to plan and prevent that. So I'm excited to see like how she helps me in this next year and getting that accomplished. So I feel like more of a balance with that. Yeah. Yeah. I think, um, again, it just kind of goes back to what systems you build the good systems. Everybody thinks that it's, um, I don't know, you get to, you get to whatever goal, you get to whatever achievement that you want. And everybody thinks that it was, you know, talent and hard work and all of that, that got you there. And it was, but ultimately the reason you got there was because you had some sort of a system in place that enabled you to get there. And I think the systems don't get, don't get as much credit um, yeah. as they perhaps should, because without the system, sometimes you get lucky. Like sometimes, you know, it happens. You do. And, and you can make it pretty far. I feel like without a system, but then as soon as like, you want to get bigger or like something comes up then it's like oh my gosh I wish I would have had that from the beginning and I've heard that so much from like other entrepreneurs like of like what would you do differently kind of thing I'm like okay like I really need to do that and I'm like 50 50 it like I'm like I still need to get systems in place but I also still need to like generate some income and stuff so yeah it's a balance it is a delicate balance of figuring out um or figuring out and looking long enough term of like, is this system, do I need to upgrade the system yet? Like, does it make sense? At what stage does it make sense? And kind of mapping out those milestones I found. Um, There's some things that you do need 
you have to advance if you would like to get bigger, but um, some things you can just leave alone and realize that it's a flawed system, but if you get bigger, you'll fix it yes. um, sort of a situation. So speaking of like getting bigger and all of that, like what is your big goal with well-fed life? Like, do you, uh, you want to reach your max capacity, obviously of, you know, 20 to 25 clients at any one time, but then like, do you want to expand this into like hiring other coaches to be able to do that? Or are you looking at remaining a one woman show? Like what's the plan? Yeah. So this was actually a question at my one-on-one in September that I had, you know, if they're (laughs) like, so what's the goal? What's the game plan? Cause I totally thought I'm like, well, it would be awesome, you know, to have, you know, an assi- one assistant coach and kind of like have, uh, you know, build up the clients and do all that. And they're like, but is that what you really want? Like, do you really want that? Or like, because they know me from like telling, you know, meeting with them before and stuff. They're like, you have other interests too, right? Like, are you really interested in like building this huge company? And I'm like, okay, no, not really. Honestly, you're right. I'm like, I just, I enjoy the coaching aspect. So sometimes people get into coaching and they're like, I like it, but I don't love it. Like I would rather be like the business leader and have assistant coaches underneath me, but I do really love it. I love connecting with people and helping them on their journey. It's been so rewarding, like super gratifying. I'm definitely one of those people that I'm like, if I give, then like I receive so much more, I feel like. But um, ideally me meeting that 20 to 25 clients and then instead which is what they kind of like proposed to me I'm like ooh, you're right like that is actually what I'd rather have is like an assistant or a virtual assistant or like a marketing person to do the social media stuff for me to do like the Facebook reels or the Instagram and stuff like that where I can just focus more on my clients and then they can kind of do like the client acquisition for me so that would be like where I would see like transitioning of having like a virtual assistant to help with that side of things because that takes a lot of like time energy and effort and I am kind of a perfectionist so I get really sucked in like I know we were talking about editing and stuff and I'm like I just eventually have to tell myself to, to stop. Just It's good enough. Just go with it. So that would be like big goals. Max out with those 20 to 25 clients and then have like a virtual assistant because I do have other ambitions like outside of nutrition coaching that I would also like to pursue or follow. So yeah, like what? Tell me more. Yeah. So, well, <laughs> the one I kind of hinted at, like, I'm probably going to make my sister watch this podcast, but uh, the Airbnb, like, tiny home thing, that would be one avenue that I would really like to follow and kind of, like, put together a, a business plan of, like, what would this look like? Does it even make sense? Like, would we actually make money off of it? Um, so that's one. Another one that is, like, just another, I guess, like, passion of mine is that I signed up, but again, like, self-led man you gotta have a plan or it doesn't get done signed up to get my substitute teaching certification so I do really enjoy working with kids too and I definitely believe like it's a lot easier to start a good habit than break a bad habit and incorporate a good habit so being able to kind of influence kids in that aspect and knowing like I have a lot of family that are teachers and stuff and knowing that the school system has its own many flaws but being able to kind of give back in that way of like hey I could like substitute teach whenever I want I live in Maxwell like two blocks from the school so I'm like it's super convenient and you can pick up hours whenever so like for me owning my own business it'd be like oh if I had a slow day like yeah sure I'll pick up a day and go substitute teach and knowing at least like you know when we were in school substitute teachers usually were like press play watch this video (laughs) yeah but I'm like man I could like be like oh let's talk about nutrition let's talk about health and exercise let's let let's talk about these things that are not traditionally like teaching you on how to actually do these things in school so that is something I want to do and kind of pursue too just as like not like a job I guess like I wouldn't look at it as a job I guess it's just like I want to do this and give back and kind of have an opportunity to make some extra bucks whenever I felt like it yeah very cool I like it you seem like um seem like any other entrepreneur where you have lots of ideas of other things that you would like to build seems like we just can't we can't sit still with whatever (laughs) we're working on we're like well I could do this and I could do this and so um it sounds like a natural fit for you to be an entrepreneur yes without a doubt whether you knew it or not back when you were going through school yeah I definitely did not know it back then that's okay (laughs) most people don't um and I I 
I do think that there is definitely value with going out after college and working for someone before you start your own business. Um, I tend to steer college age kids who are like in an entrepreneurship sort of a course study I say go work for somebody just go do it yeah don't care if you stay there for two years don't you know I don't care go work for somebody see what it's like like to just do it you may get there and you may decide you know what this like every two week paycheck thing pretty nice pretty great I get to go home leave it at home like that might be a better fit for you than just jumping out and starting your own thing so um yeah very cool is there anything else that you want people to know about Oh, I don't know. I feel like we covered a lot. Yeah. And I probably talk, I talk a lot. So you're probably like, oh my gosh, lady. No, no, no. <laughs> you're supposed to. That's why I started a podcast. I wanted people to come on and have a platform to talk about. Yeah, talk about. I guess the one thing I would like to say or mention is like just kind of going back to like health and taking ownership is that I am a strong proponent of like finding out what works for you. And that might not necessarily mean going to your doctor and asking them for diet and exercise information because that's not their specialty like that's not what they were trained for and I think in our like modern healthcare system for whatever reason that's what we've been led to believe right we just go to our primary care physician for everything they're supposed to know it all well they don't like their nutrition education is very small in their vast education that they got it's like a semester maybe like I look back at it and I've talked to like friends that are doctors and stuff. It's like I have more nutrition, like knowledge and education than they do. And it's not like their fault. Like that's just not what their passion was or what they went to school for. So they are important for helping like if, you know, certain diseases and things like that. But as far as like preventative health, like you are your own advocate and you know your body best, like more than anyone. So like if you believe something is wrong, then like something is probably wrong. If someone tells you like, oh no it's fine or it's just in your head or like well maybe it's this like here we're gonna give you this medication and you're like oh well I don't really know then like go ask and get a second opinion or go find like I'm really a big proponent for like functional medicine doctors too now especially because they work with you they teach you they educate you and like being able to take back your ownership of your health and actually understand what's going on I feel like is going to be the best for your health overall yeah totally agree totally agree All right. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for coming on today and telling me all about Well-Fed Life. And if people want to follow you, want to, uh, you know, inquire about being a client, if they just want to learn more, where should they go? Yeah. So um, on Facebook, I mentioned the Facebook community, Metabolism Makeover for the Overthinker. That's the community that you can join for free. A lot of resources. That's where, like, I put the uh, promotions out for, like, the challenges recipe packs things like that um you can find me personally jenny english on facebook or i do have a well-fed life like a facebook page that you can view as well on instagram it's wellfed.gen and that's also like on tiktok as well i do some funny videos that are also hopefully provide some information as well And I think that's it. I do have a YouTube channel too. It's not like very big. It's mostly exercise based. So that's also like at a well-fed gen. So awesome. Well, I will make sure that I put all those links in the show notes as well. So people can just go in there and click on them. Uh, But thank you so much for sitting down today. Absolutely. It was great. I enjoyed it. Thank you.